Hello, Washco Wisco residents or alum or other interested parties. Thank you for tuning in to 15 Minutes with Fuzz. I'm your host, Fuzz Martin, and this is a show where we feature good things going on in and around Washington County, Wisconsin. I release new episodes every Monday morning at midnight. You can find the show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts, or at 15withfuzz.com. This is a labor of love, which is coincidentally in line with the topic of this week's show. My guest this week is Adam Gitter. He is the Kewaskum Village Administrator. My wife, Shanna, had alerted me to a post on social media about how the Kewaskum Kiwanis Pond might not open this summer if the village of Kewaskum cannot find qualified applicants to run the pond and enough lifeguards to manage it. Thankfully, Adam agreed to come on the show and to discuss the village's needs, why the pond is in this position, and what we as a community can do to ensure it's open this summer. So with that, here's 15 minutes on keeping the Kiwanis Pond open with Adam Gitter on 15 Minutes with Fuzz. Adam, thanks for joining me today. So to do some introductions for our listeners, you're the Kewaskum Village Administrator. Before that, you were the West Bend Economic Development Director. You also spent some time in the Army, including serving in Afghanistan. In terms of your your current role, what does a village administrator do? Hey, Fuzz. Yes, uh, I am the village administrator in Kewaskum. Really simply put, I serve at the will of the board and the village president. So they set the vision. They tell me, hey, here's the stuff we want to see happening in Kewaskum. And then I carry it out with our team that we have over in Kewaskum. Sure. So including like public works and parks and rec and that kind of stuff? Correct. All right. Very good. And so what what do you like best about your role as the village administrator? Honestly, I really just enjoy working with the people. Our staff, yes, I really enjoy working with them. And then also just being able to serve the village and the people of Kewaskum. That's it's really amazing to me that I have that opportunity. And then on the other side of that, what is the most challenging part of your job? Well, the challenging part of my job, I guess, would be there's a lot of times where you got to break some bad news, right? Sure, <laughs> sure. You got to talk about debt every once in a while mm-hmm. or, you know, a project that, hey, we really thought we could get done, but it's just, it's not going to work out the way we wanted to. But sure. the challenges are also what make the job exciting and fun. So yeah, uh, every day is a, a new adventure. Absolutely. You grew up here in Kewaskum, right? Correct. And so what is your favorite part of our village? Well, outside of the fact that I have my family and babysitters all around me <laughs> at any given time, uh, <laughs> you know, I we're going to get into it talking about Kiwanis in a little yeah. bit, but I actually lived on Edgewood. For in the, for those that don't know, Edgewood runs right up along Kiwanis Park. And mm-hmm. so my backyard was the Kiwanis Pond. So, you know, I always liked that park. You know, other things I like about Kewaskum, you know, the walkability. Yeah. Um, I, can I just get went for a two and a quarter mile walk today with the puppy because it's 50 degrees out finally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I find it hard to get above two miles. It's just, <laughs> I, find, <laughs> I lap myself. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. No, I, I find I, if you walk from, uh, from H all the way down to uh, 28 and back, that's, uh, yeah, that'll get you two and a quarter miles. So sure. There okay. you go. A little tip I, from your uncle Fuzz. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> So today we're going to talk about the pond, the Kiwanis, uh, Kiwaskum Kiwanis Park Pond. And as a Kiwaskum resident, pretty much your entire life, I mean, you, again, you, in a, you grew up with this in your backyard. You have some fond memories from the pond? Yes, absolutely. You know, it'd, it'd be our sliding door going out of our kitchen opened up to it. So yeah, we would just go sprinting out and just run in. We'd have our season pass already, ju- you know, jumping off the high dive and all sorts of fun stuff. Yeah. yeah. Goofing around, being a kid, yep. learning how to swim, that kind of stuff. As the guy who runs the operations of the village or oversees that, what is the most challenging part for the village about running the pool or the pond? Excuse me. You know, there, there's a few challenges. You know, a lot of people immediately want to turn to money. The yeah. pond runs at a deficit. We lose about just over $60,000 a year on the pond, but it's not what it's about. It's a service to the community. You know, there's a social equity component to it, right? Not everybody has a pool in their backyard. Right. And in government, sometimes we have the responsibility to provide those services. Sure. But that's not holding us up here. You know, we, we have the pond budgeted for. Yep. It's really staffing. 
Okay. So in the past, we've had an individual named Butch. He ran the pond. Yep. I, somebody said 35 years. I thought there's no way it's that many years, but it, it was a <laughs> long time he ran the pond. And, you know, he just, he made it work. Yeah. And then last year, it was looking like it was going to close down. Mm-hmm. And someone stepped up. Her name is Brianna. She stepped up, but she was young and finishing up her degree in college. And, okay. you know, it's time to move on to the next steps in life. So she helped us cover up that year. Yeah. But now we're just back in the same position we've been in in the past. So the challenge is we got to find somebody to run the pond. And then after that, it's also, you need lifeguards. Yep. You need 15 to 20 lifeguards just to keep the deep end open yep. and, and also get the weekends open. Right. And that's what was, wasn't happening last year. Also, we just didn't have the manpower. Then we didn't have the weekends open. Mm-hmm. Deep end was closed every once in a while. Let's face it. The deep end is the most fun time you can have. Absolutely. You know, you hang yeah. off where the diving board's at and right. all that yeah. stuff, right? That's <laughs> um, where you do all the cool tricks. Otherwise, you know, you're just bobbing up and down. A post on social media from the Kiwanis Park Pond page. Lots of P's in there. It says, summer of 2022 update. In order for Kiwanis to open this summer, the pond is in need of a supervisor and lifeguards. Previous guards and staff are unlikely to return due to age as many are graduating college as many of you know, last year, the pond faced a similar challenge with limited guards during the summer of 2021. We were forced to close on Saturdays and other days throughout the week when there was not enough staff available to work. The hope for this summer is to avoid these issues by getting enough staff on board, but time is limited to find applicants. If the facility is to open the summer, it must be open on weekends and all future employees will be required to work on Saturdays and Sundays. A final decision will be made at the end of March on whether the pond will open for the summer of 22 or if it will remain closed. In order for the pond to be open, there must be an applicant for the supervisor position around and around 15 lifeguard applicants who have expressed interest in working in the pond this summer by the end of next month. Staffing is the main issue right now, and there's no way to move forward unless enough employment interest is expressed. Applicants do not need to be lifeguard certified, but must be willing to go through the training before the pond opens. Applicants can be found, applications can be found on the village website or picked up at the municipal building in Kewaskum. Lifeguards must be 16 or older, and the supervisor position requires applicants to have graduated from high school or contain an equivalent degree. Kiwanis Pond is a great summer job, especially for high school students. Please encourage students to start thinking about a summer job and spread the word. Do you have any comments to add to that, Adam? <laughs> sure, like that's not enough. Uh, yeah, no, I'd, uh, that's it, right? We, we really just, we need the help. Mm-hmm. And we need the help by mid-March. So we need to know by then, yes, we're going to have all the people. Because if we don't have them by then, we, we need to make that decision of, well, we're going to close it now because our public works staff needs to determine if they're going to be ordering the chemicals for the pond, yep. minnows, that sort of thing. So sure. there's there's thousands of dollars in just prep work by mid-March we got to figure out. This has been a struggle for some time now. What do you think the biggest challenge is hiring lifeguards? Because it's been open you know, for however many decades. Why are we struggling to find lifeguards now? Um, the hard to find kids that want to work. Is that kind of the piece or? I don't believe that. No, I, okay. I, I actually kind of refuse to believe that as a philosophy, okay. right? We're in the age of employees now more empowered than they ever were be. And I actually kind of appreciate that. Sure. Um, you know, we're competing with the likes of quick trip and, yep. you know, drive through McDonald's and you'll see a $15 starting wage, that sort of thing. You know, it's, there's a lot of great jobs out there for high school kids also. Yep. And there's a lot of demands being put on teenagers as well, as far as, you know, you're going to be in sports or you got the extracurriculars over there. And yeah, it's, there's a lot taking up their time and we're trying to ask them to carve out a piece of their time to work at the pond as well. Sure. At a certain wage. We're looking for somebody that wants this pond to be a labor of love, yep. right? They, it's only a few months out of the year. Yes. We need them to do their own recruitment on lifeguards, but you know, somebody's really got to love it. That's going to step up kind of like Butch did, right? Like it was, he wasn't doing this to get rich, right? right it was right. the next person's not going to be doing that either. It's just, it's a service to the community. And that's what we all do in the public sector. We, we do what we do to serve the community. Yeah. So we're looking for the next person to want to do that with the pond. He is, I guess, hiring at a higher salary and increasing cost of admission and option. I know there's some concerns about taxes and budget numbers sure. and then also keeping the pool accessible right yeah that's exactly it we don't want to raise the rates so significantly that one we either price ourselves out of the market and then all of a sudden we don't have people showing up to the pond but even then that's not my biggest concern my biggest concern is that now there's an even higher barrier for entry for the family down the road that 
just needs a place to go during the summer. Right. I can't see that happening. Mm -hmm. But one of the things we also have to do is figure out a way to get everybody through swim lessons. Yeah. You know, it's a big deal for kids to be able to learn to swim. Mm -hmm. There's lakes all around us. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. We don't live in Arizona. We live, we live in Wisconsin. You could. Right. Going to be in water. Right. No, exactly. But even still like going to, you know, if you live in Kewaskum, going to lessons at the YMCA, it's, they're great lessons and they've got great people doing it, but it's also difficult to get the kids in the car, get them to lessons, get them changed and dressed and exactly. and back to Kewaskum when it's, uh, you know, if you're a parent, you've been there. That added step of a wet child getting strapped into a car seat is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember being up at Kiwanis and doing my swim lessons as a little kid and it's, mm-hmm. it's rain or shine and it's still that way. Yeah. In the freezing rain early in the morning, still doing your swim lessons. But yeah. you know, you think back to those shivers and you still, you get nostalgic for it. Right. I think it makes you a bigger, a stronger swimmer. You know, you don't have all the luxuries of warm water. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> For those who'd like to get involved with running the pond, what are some of the requirements and, and what's that kind of pay range for that position? Here? So the best way to get uh, in touch is just go into the village website and you'll see our posting for the pond supervisor and the lifeguard positions. We're also looking for a basket attendant, which was the most fun you could have when you were a kid working at the pond. You really just throw on some music and hang out at the counter and take the cash as they come oh, in yeah. and out. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That always did look like a fun job, putting the right? bracelets on people and sure. just sitting there listening to, yeah, listen to music. <laughs> I see like they're reading books and. It was, there was always a book in someone's hand during that one too, yeah. right? Yeah, that's a cush job, which yeah. sounds, sounds fun. So all the lifeguard applicants have to be 16 or older. Same with those basket attendants. Correct. I mean, we could do 15 years of age. Uh, I would actually encourage 15 year olds to apply and we'll go from there. I think there was some new legislation that was passed that allows for that to happen. So, all right. So wrapping up, if the pool is closed this year, is it doomed for future years? No. Okay. I would never say that it's doomed. Okay. But if it's closed for this year, there's going to be funds that have already been set aside and we're going to figure out what we do at that point. I know there is a group out there that's looking at a master plan of Kiwanis and it's just getting off the ground. Okay. Something kind of neat about for the whole park itself for the park itself. Yeah. Okay. Um, one of the neat things is in the past, when I first got into my role, maybe like seven months ago or so I found this, it was like a secret shopper thing that was done on Kiwaskum and I think it was Watertown. So we sent residents there and they sent residents here and then they ranked all the features within Kiwaskum. Kiwanis ranked at the top. Oh, sure. It's the gem of the community as they put it. Right. So yeah continuing to focus on what is already our gem and making sure that it it keeps its high status. We still continue to provide great services within Kiwanis Park. There's got to be some other solutions, right? So what are some of the other solutions that have been talked about? Well, some of the other solutions that have been talked about, what if we just went down the path of, we do complete a master plan of Kiwanis and then it comes back and says, well, maybe you should put in a splash pad and some pickleball courts, right? Pickleball courts are what I keep talking about just because I'm a big fan, but Lots of people it, like pickleball. It's fantastic. We'll <laughs> play sometime. Uh, as soon as we get some. I'm in, I'm in. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, was, I mean, people talk about a splash pad. Mm-hmm. We've gotten some advice from some aquatic experts, we call them, saying, hey, you know, you should really look at a splash pad. It's it's really what a lot of communities are going towards. Mm-hmm. But that would mean, yes, we're getting away from the pond, right? right. And we don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. But there are some other alternatives. I've brought those alternatives up with my wife, just bouncing <laughs> my work off of her. Sure. Like, hey, I, I just had a parks committee meeting. Here's yeah. how it went. I told her about it. And I told her about the, what about a splash pad? Do you think you'd use it? Mm-hmm. I have a seven-year-old, so yeah. don't you think that'd be great if there were some picnic tables? She said, is this your idea? I said, well, I presented <laughs> the ideas. And she said, careful, get her. And it wasn't in the sense that, hey, you're going to lose your job if you go do that it was uh you're about to make your wife really upset if you get rid of the pond so (laughs) there's some challenges yeah well i mean that goes to speak to how beloved the pond is by residents here but also the challenge frankly is if you can't find anybody to run it it can't it can't run and and that's where the the hang-up is right now yeah we got to find those people kiboscom in general is a very outdoor recreational type of community or gateway to the kettle moraine right yeah exactly the pond is just a reflection of that within our community. Yes, we're all outside, we're on the beach, we're swimming, we're doing all sorts of great stuff, but we're doing it outside. Exactly. If you're listening and you know of someone who would make a great lifeguard or make a great supervisor for the Kiwaskum Kiwanis Pond, 
go to the village website, village.kiwaskum.wi.us and encourage that person or you, if it's you listening to fill out an application and Adam, if there's somebody has more questions on the position or the role or the vision for the pond, who can they reach out to? Just call, call the village hall. My number is 262-626-8484. You'll also find my email address on there, but yeah, just Give us a call. We're, okay. We'll listen to anybody that's got some ideas or knows of somebody that can take it over. If the pool doesn't open this year, what are the ramifications going to be for you at home? Yeah. Lynn's going to kick you out or make you sleep hard. in a different room? <laughs> <laughs> She's going to just make me follow everyone around with some spritz bottles of water. So that <laughs> Thank you for joining me. I appreciate you coming in and best of luck. Thank you. Thanks again to... Kewaskum Village Administrator Adam Gitter for coming on the show at the last minute. I appreciate his insight and his knowledge of the situation with the Kiwanis Pond. And again, if you know someone who is willing to take on managing the pond or becoming a lifeguard, please visit the Village of Kewaskum's website and fill out an application ASAP. Encourage your kids, their friends, your retired neighbor, etc., etc., to help keep the pond open. It's a shining star in our little village and a part of many residents' childhoods, and we'd all hate to see it closed. I know I typically only cover positive things on the show, but I really think that this is an opportunity for someone to help create a positive situation out of one that needs a champion. And I'm hoping the reach of this show can make that happen. Until next week, thanks for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and or Google Podcasts, and I'll talk to you next Monday right here on 15 Minutes with Fuzz.